All right, good morning. Today we're going to cover the pattern of inheritance. By doing this lecture today, you are going to be able to understand the lab. So, um, first of all, what are genes? Genes, where they exist? They are in your DNA, right? This is uh, the initial of information about specific trait that exists in your DNA. And each genes have a specific location. We call that locus on the chromosomes. Alleles are different molecular form of genes with exact sequence. A new allele arise by mutations. Different allele of the same gene produce basically the same protein through an mRNA messenger uh, via what we call the gene expression. This is where the gene get expressed into protein. So the different allele of the same gene produce basically the same protein. If one or more amino acid may change, it results in different structures, different cellular function. It's not only one amino acid. If only one nucleotic base change, instead of A, you have a T, everything change. Remember, an amino acid, it's a codon, right? What is a tray? Tray is a particular physical characteristic. For example, the flower color, the blood type. And the allele can be, dom uh, I mean, yeah, dominant. That means the dominant, they are the one that um, uh, the, the, They mask the order, they dominate everything. And we represent them with the capital letters. Recessive is the opposite. They are the one that they are masked by the dominant. They are masked and often designed by lower letter, lower case letters. Wild type, they are the normal allele between parentheses, the most common allele in any populations. And the mutant ones are the ones that are not normal. And the, um, the most recently formed allele by mutations. Zygote is the fertilized egg. This is the first diploid cell that produced a new generation. Cross mean mathing between individuals. Self pollinate mean that um, it happened most of it in the plant uh, that they, they, they have um, the same gamut in the same plant. I mean, the, the, the both gamut, sorry, different gamut in the same plant. So we do self -pollinate, uh, pollinations. This is where the male and the females are in the same plant. Cross-pollinate, this is when I take male from one plant and they take female gamete from a different plant. And the planet square is a chart that um, we use in genetics to determine possible combination array among the offspring, which means the, the, the new generations uh, that it came from the parental uh, genotype. Genotype, what is it? This is the combination of allele carried uh, by, um, by an individual that causes a particular phenotype. This is a genotype. The genotype can be either dominant or recessive, right? I can, it can be either double dominant, so it's an homozygote, or heterozygote, um, double A, a small A, or homozygote recessive. Phenotype, what is it? Is the is the 
version of the destroy display by an individual. This phenotype, I can, I can see it, like for example, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, I can see it, I can touch it, but some of it, you can, for example, the group type, the group type, it's not, you are not, um, if you, I see you, I cannot see which group type you are, right? It's not really uh, always um, uh, a physical characteristic of an individual. Or disorders like Q, uh, B, Q, which is actually a phenotype, which is due to um, uh, the absence of a enzyme that's caused, um, that cannot degrade the philinananine from uh, that cause uh, this genetic disorder. The heredity is the transmission of the tree from one generation to the next and the genetics, it's a scientific study of this heredity. Okay? So we are going to talk about Mandel. Mandel Gregor uh, Johann Mandel is considered the godfather of genetics. He he didn't even pass the fifth grade, so his parents in us, uh, I think he's Autriche, Austria, they get so tired of him, so they send him uh, in a religious. Um, he was a nun. He a religious. Um, a house to, you know, to practice at least to do some service to the community, to practice religion. And he gets so bored. So he starts studying and he chose to um, to grow peas. And he chose a peas and he started studying those, uh, uh, those peas that he is growing in his yard. And uh, it's he done very good because it was very easy to grow the peas. Actually, you can grow them in your backyard, and uh, when they grow, they really give a lot of um, a thousand of. Uh, uh, they are very quick, and they give a thousand of offspring quick, quickly and easily. And uh, it's very easy because the male and the female gamete exist in the same um, flowers. So he's to manipulate those so when he was doing that he come up with um with seven trays so he can look at like the flower for the pea either purple or white he can look at the seeds color either yellow or green he can look at the seed texture either round or wrinkles he can look at the pods color green or yellow he can look at the inflamed um i mean the road shape he can look at also the flower position is there axial or terminal and he can even see that he have another tree that is the plant and he starts playing around them so when he crossed purple flower been white flower he obtained most of his next generation the next uh, offspring is um purple most of it if you look at the number, this is 705 purple. All right, cool. And when he, again, he play with the seeds, look at that when he seeds, when he cross yellow with the green, he obtained most of it yellow, which is uh, later on, he said that is the color yellow the, is the dominant and the purple is dominant. And the wrinkles versus uh, um, Rome, he found that uh, almost this is always wrong, right? He obtained uh, almost three to one, three to one, three to one. Always it's almost 2.82, three to one, also green pods. So say always when he crossed the first parental, uh, he, uh, the F2 generation, it's always a ratio of one to three. So um, the first cross, he called them the parental generations, right? And when he cross fertilized it, he obtained the next generation. So it's called F1 generation. And F1 generation, 
and show you by pictures, he can obtain the second generation by cross fertilizing them. And when he realizes it, he can them, right? And when he take this second generation that it came from uh, the first generation and he cross it, uh, fertilize it, he starts seeing the white one, the one that disappear during the first generations. So Mendel discovered the ratio that is actually it's always one true breeding dominant versus two non breeding dominant plants and one true breeding recessive plant. It's three quarter versus one quarter plant with the recessive form, one that appear in the F2 generation. So to making it easy, we come up with the Punnett square, which is a diagram used to predict an outcome. All right, so we are going to use the letter uh, capital P or capital letter for the dominant. And the small uh, case, lower case, is for recessive allele. So we are going to call the purple a big P and this, the white that is a recessive, we are going to name it small P. So in the pan, it's square, and when it's big P, big P, that's mean they are homozygote, true breeding, uh, homozygote, true breeding purple flower. When it's small P, small P, it's true breeding white flower plant. And when it's heterozygote, big P, small P, it's a, a purple and a recessive, dominant and recessive in the same time. So we take purple parent. This is my parent. This is my F1 generation over here. So I obtain big P, small p, big P, small p. I obtain heterozygote. So then I will take one parent and they self cross right? Fertilizate. And this is what I've done, right? So the Allele are going to be big, big P, small p, big P, small p, and they cross it, and the whites appear. So easy. Um, then he gets amazed. Then he said, oh, I'm going to examine two separate prey on a single cross. I will also add the seed, not only the color for the seed, but also the shape of the seed. And I'm going to take yellow versus green. And I will take yellow round and green wrinkles. Uh, smooth, yellow smooth. and uh, and wrinkles. So I'm going to do this dehybrid cross. So this is this one. The gamut could be either double um, the the big Y for yellow and R, right? For round the smooth. And this one is small yellow because it's green and yellow is the dominant one. And wrinkles, little r, it's recessive, and they cross it, and they obtain. If you do the Punnett square, this is what you obtain as generation. If we now we transfer the pollen from this F1 plant on the pistil of another F1 plant. Um, 
don't, we do the fertilizations will happen, of course. What will be the genotype um, and the phenotype ratio of the F2 generation? Before even you go to the next slide, I really want you to take a paper and play on it, play it, do it. Do the planet square here from the F1. You are going to take the transfer the pollen from the F1 generation, this one, and you are going to cross it with another uh, F1 generation, double cross it, okay? The hybrid cross. And this is exactly what you are going to obtain. First of all, let's talk about the gametes over here. What are the possible gametes? This is what you are going to do. Double um, the Y, big R, big Y, big R, a big Y, small R. This is second gamut. Small Y, big R, small Y, small R. All right, same things over here. I repeat, those are going to be the gamut. I, I, I obtain only one copy of each tray. Big Y, big R. Big Y, small R. Small Y, big R. Small Y, small R. And I upload them over here. This, this is my gamut over here. Supposedly that this is male and this is female. Whatever, and this is male or this is female. Doesn't matter. And they fertilize them and they cross them. They have to put over here the possible gamut for in each F1 individual. And they obtain the phenotype ratio, which is yellow round, I obtain nine to six can them. Yellow around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At total, I have 16, so it's nine over 16. True. Green around one, two, three, three over 16. Yellow and wrinkles. Well, let's count them one, two, three over 16. Now, green and uh, um, yellow and wrinkles. Sorry, three over 16. Now, green and wrinkles, I have only one over 16. So this is my dehybrid ratio that I obtained with two traits. And the Punnett square is very important over here. In, uh, very nice because it explained me the principle of independent assortment. You remember when that happened. It happened during the meiosis, especially when the, cell, the cells during the meiosis, during the anaphytes, they get separated. They get separated um, independently. It, it, the segregation of the different allele pair is independent. The independent alignment of different homozygous chromosome pair during the metaphase one leads to the independent separation of the different allele pairs. You remember it happened um, during the meiosis. We, we really don't know which chromosome homologue will go to which pole. It's really independent. And, and, um, and and remember this, this time of Mandal DNA is not being discovered yet. We don't even know meiosis yet. And he was talking about all this stuff. He called it a tray. He called it uh, something, you know, a factor that is inherited. He named it. He said, oh, we have the next generation inherit some factors from the parent. DNA come up later on we cloned the dna in 1956 i don't know i'm talking about 18 in the last 1800 when mandel came up with this hybrid cross and when this uh, principle of independent assortment so let's look at again the dehybrid cross right with two tray the tray is the color of the seeds and the texture of the seeds 
either yellow or green, smooth, round, or wrinkles. All right? And the ratio for the F2 generation from this F1, which is a dehybrid, it's a double heterozygote, right? It's double heterozygote. It's nine, three, three, one. Before I go um, to to summarize the five element model that came up from Mandel experiment with the peas, we he done something very nice. He said, "Oh, okay, an individual with a dominant phenotype could have either it could be either homozygote." Or heterozygote for this trait. How will we know that? How I should know that this individual is homozygote for this trait? I know he have a dominant, but I don't know. Is he hybrid? Is he heterozygote? Sorry, or is he monozygote for this trait? So he come up with this. Oh, test cross. What's that mean? I take it and they cross it with the recessive monozygote. This is what we call test cross. Remember that. Test cross, it's an individual with a dominant phenotype because I don't know. I know he have a dominant phenotype. I see him. I see it. He have a dominant phenotype. But I don't, what I don't know, what is inside of it, is it homozygote or is it heterozygote for this phenotype? In another way, is he going to be, for example, for color yellow, is it going to be big yellow, big yellow, or big yellow, small yellow? Or, for example, for the flower purple, is it going to be big P? Uh, for purple, big P or big P, small P, because both of them will give me the same phenotype, which is the color purple. Big yellow, small yellow, or big yellow, big yellow, giving me the same color for the seeds, which is yellow, the same color, which is yellow. I really don't know. So what I am going to do, I'm going to do the test cross. The test cross will allow me to determine to a known real genotype. I know the phenotype. Now I am going to determine the genotype by observing what's come up from this cross, what's come up from this test cross with this uh, homozygote recessive, right? So uh, this is exactly, for example, I have this yellow seed, but the thing is, I don't know the genotype for these seeds. All what I know, I see it, it's yellow. So I know the phenotype is ye yellow. I know that the gene big Y exists, but is it big Y, small Y, big Y, big Y? So I will cross it with the same one, the same tree, but recessive. And it's going to be homozygote recessive. So I will cross it, all right? And this is what I obtain. I obtain big yellow, small yellow, big yellow, small yellow, big yellow, small yellow. What's that? Telling me then, that is telling me that the genotype for this guy is big Y, big Y. If I ever obtain a green, which is recessive, that means this guy is heterozygote for the phenotype. He's not homozygous. You got this one. Just work on it. Very important. So let's summarize. So there are five element model that come up from Mondale experiment that they have some factors that they are transmitted. They are this, they can be distracted. It's so funny. They can be distracted. They can be either dominant or recessive. Those now we know those are genes. At this time, he doesn't know. Here is what he came up with. 
each individual receive one copy of a gene from each parent. Now understood, we understand that because all the pairs segregate during the anaphase, independent assortment. Not all the copy of the genes are identical, all right? We have one that they, they are homozygous, which is two of the same allele. There are some that they are heterozygous, different allele. The allele remain district, no blending. And the presence of allele does not guarantee the expression because some of them can be dominant and some of them can be recessive. And we come up later with the genotype and phenotype that the genetic makeup for an individual. And the phenotype, like for example, I told you the seeds is yellow, that yellow is the phenotype. The genotype is either big Y, big Y, or big Y, small Y. There is one thing about Mandel. Mandel um, model of inheritance assumes that each tree is controlled by single genes. This is what he this time, all right, we come up with, um, I mean, not most of the genes meet this uh, criteria with all we discover later on. Um, each gene has only two allele. They are clear dominant, uh, dominant recessive relationship, I mean, between the alleles. Uh, but most of the genes cannot meet this criteria. And one of them is what? human height, look at how many genes are, the, the acquiral multiple genes are involved in controlling the, 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 the phenotype of a trait. The phenotype is an accumulation of contributions by multiple genes. This is what we call the polygenic inheritance. Another thing also that um, is not meeting those uh, Mandel criteria is the pleiotropy. The pleiotropy is inheritance pattern caused by one allele, but he caused um, multiple um, defective, um, a multiple, um, uh, what do you call, I, I will call them disease. But it refers only to one allele and actually to only one uh, nitrogenous base that has been changed in the DNA and when it has been uh, transcripted uh, into an amino acid, he gave me different protein, which is an hemoglobin that is not a wild type, it's mutated and it causes cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia, and, uh, and this is uh, pleiotropic effect, uh, effects are, are very difficult to predict because the gene that affects one trait often perform other unknown functions like this. It can cause lung fillers, kidney fillers, liver fillers, oh my, we can name it. It's called pleiotropy. Eutropy, it's a cause, um, the gene that affects one tray often perform other unknown function. It's caused by an allele which has more than one effect on the individual phenotype. You have more. It's an inheritance pattern caused by an allele that has more that cause more um, disease. Some of them are not even known. The gene locus for which there are more than two allele commonly found in population, it causes a different phenotype, right? Just based on the importance function of the gene product, how many different variants can exist will be limited by many gene lo lo locations, lossy. 
that have more than two allel possibilities. Regardless of the number of possible allele, each individual can still only inherit two alleles because we are diploid organisms. Example, the group, um, the blood type, ABU in human has three common alleles, all right? Three common alleles. I have this allele, I can have this, this, just three commons allele. Before I go here, let me finish this and they come back to this. Is A, B, and O. That's the alleles. Before I move on and show you this slide, let's talk about dominance relations. The complete dominance, the incomplete dominance, and co-dominance. That's what's play a role here. Um, complete dominance, that's what we see in the peas. This was very common, right? We can see it less only if we have some in the homozygote recessive. And complete dominance is when the heterozygote phenotype is somewhere between that of the two homozygotes. It's that the copy of the functional allele is not enough to produce the same phenotype as two copies. The codominance, non-identical allele specify two phenotypes that are both expressed. Both of them are expressed. This is codominance. Let's give you an example of incomplete dominance. Look at those flowers. When we cross true breeding red flower part with the true breeding white flower, we obtain all F1 is a pink, heterozygote. No red flowers are no white flower. When you self cross this pink F1, you get the F2 generation, then you will have red, pink, and white appearing. The red pigment is not completely dominant over the non-pigment, which is the white allele. And therefore, it's incomplete dominant. Do you understand now? The red flower allele we design it by C, R, and the white flower we will design it by C, W. We cannot use capital and lowercase in this case, choose, because we don't have dominance. We don't have a dom because either phenotype dominates over the others, so it the right phenotype is in between. That's incomplete dominance. Can you understand this part? Codominance allele. In codominance allele, two allele cause a phenotype that is not blended. I rather show both phenotype in the same times, and you see it in the in the blood um, in our uh, human uh, that control genes that control ABU blood type on code an enzyme that control the structure of glycolipids. Um, so two known allele for the group A, for example. They are um, 
we call it a big, um, we call it I because of this glycolipid, A, and he can be also small. Either big I, A, big I, A, or big I, A, and small I. The same thing for B. A and B are both operating with the capital I to indicate that they are dominant allele, both of them. So when an individual with the phenotype big A, big A, but with I, I, and the phenotype big I, A, they have type A, but when an individual with the B, he have a B. So this is the way we rate our genotype for the group A. This is how we rate it for the group B. Here is how we rate it for the group A. Uh, o, uh, it's a small i, i. And this is A, B. That means they are both dominant. This is what we call combination of dominance. Are dominant. The group O individual is considered an universal donor because their red blood cells can carry type A and no, um, can carry neither type A, neither type B antigen. So uh, do not cause uh, an immune response or recipient. So the group, the type O can be um, given to individual with the type O, type I, type B, or type A. And B. They have also other, um, like epistasis is the product of one gene directly affect the expression of an actions of another gene product. This is called um, epistasis. Um, it's common when a tree is determined by action of metabatoid. That's mean they have a series of enzymes involved. Um, For example, the motlet agouti coat color A is the dominant solar coloration, such as black or gray. The genes at a separate locus is responsible for the pigment predictions. The recessive C does not produce pigment. So the mouse with homozygote recessive C, C genotype is albino, regardless of which allele are present at the A locus. Those are our albinos. It doesn't matter if she have, look at that, this is an albino, and she does have the A the dominant color, which is either black or gray. She does have it, but since she carried the C, this is an albino, it doesn't matter. As soon as she carries this C allele, she's an albino. Because the C recessive does not produce the pigment that will cause this allele A to Give the color. So 
So the gene expression of this C affect the gene of the color fur, the, the A. So if A is with double C, C, C is not going to produce any pigmentation. Okay. When we talk about the gene linkage to the X chromosomes, um, you have to know to the sex chromosomes, you have to know X, Y or X, X. You have to know that the Y does not carry any um, any genes. So you are going to see that the sex when gene locus in the sex chromosome is always in the X, not in the Y. So, for example, let's look at these females. That is, um, she carry the X recessive allele, defective, right? She is, she is, she is a carrier. Father is not. Is X and Y, right? And you are going to see that the son that carry the X that he is sick, uh, the Y does not carry anything, so he is affected son. The girls can be carry can be also like their mom either carrier. And if he inherited the older X that doesn't carry the genes and they always carry they always carry the X of the dad does not carry the affected gene, the recessive one. It's a recessive all. For some reason, all those genes that cause they are related to the sex, and they are always related to the X and they are recessive. X God they are not dominant. And that's end up, I think, our uh, lectures for today. Okay. Do you have any questions? Help. No?